Well, good morning. If I asked you what was the latest news on your Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, 24-7 news channel, what would you say? Possibly something about the hurricane in Texas, political election, NBA, something. See, I'm a little bit informed today. And you probably have an answer for that. But what if I ask you this question? If I ask you what God or His Word or His Spirit had to say to you today, would you have an answer? And I'm not trying to guilt anybody into, oh, you got to be first thing in the Word, first time in, first thing in prayer, first thing in the morning, right? Um, but let's apply that a little bit today. And I'm talking to myself too, because uh, I'll move my devotional time around. But those are the two two questions of the main thing I want to discuss today. Good morning. It's Thursday, August 27th. I'm Pastor Jeff Elliott from New Horizons Fellowship here in New Haven, Indiana. And if you're a regular, you know that this spot is usually live at 9 o'clock. I uh, had something come up today that I wanted to get out here early and make sure you're able to be to, to watch this. Uh, otherwise, um, we'll see you again uh, this Sunday. We'll be streaming at 1030, our worship service, um, and then plan to be back next Tuesday at 9. Uh, and you know, we always start out with a couple of jokes. Actually, I have four of them today. Um, different kind of themes. Uh, what do you get when a chicken lays its eggs on the top of a hill? If I give you a long enough time, you'd probably figure this one out, but it's egg rolls. Good stuff, right? Uh, I went to this new restaurant that opened up down the road called Karma. Uh, they don't have any menus. You just get what you deserve. <laughs> but seriously. Uh, I have a condition where I spontaneously tell jokes at random times. Uh, I think it's a gag reflex. Oh, see, you didn't even know a joke was coming, and there it went and hit you right in the face. All right, I had a great childhood. Last one. I had a great childhood. I remember my dad would put me in a tire and roll me downhill all summer. And those were good years. Get it? Good year tires. It's good stuff all the way around here. So, anyway, we'll probably be a little bit shorter today, um, but that's okay. Because uh, I want to give you some time to study a, a, at least a specific verse on your own. And today's a, a little bit of a spinoff of Tuesday's theme. Uh, we talked about faithfulness, the last of the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, and I suggested that we're to be guided by uh, the truth of the Word, uh, the voice of the Holy Spirit, uh, and just remain faithful to what God is calling us to do. Uh, and it reminded me of uh, a couple troubling quotes over the last few weeks and months that I've seen. I think they're true. Uh, and I even expressed this thought to my wife uh, last week, I think. Uh, but it was a tweet uh, from a, he's kind of a, he's a, I think he's some, something on staff at Wheaton College, I think it is. Or maybe it's Moody, one of the two. But his name's Ed Stetzer, and he tweeted this. Uh, People are far too often discipled by their social media feed. Um, and it was kind of, that wasn't the only thing I saw. And I want to give you some more quotes from some other articles here in a little bit. Uh, but I remember I shared with uh, Tanya, my wife just recently in the past couple of weeks that I think people are are more often guided by their um, political persuasion or their political partisanship than their pastor. I'm not speaking specifically about my church, but people in general. Um, so uh, this is one of the quote, another one of the quotes that backed that up. It said, "More uh, many Christians today are being more powerfully catechized by." Uh, voices on cable news, talk radio, and podcasts than they are by voices from within the church. The average American Christian is likelier to have their views shaped by a political pundit than a preacher, to be more influenced by the bully pulpit of Twitter than the actual pulpit of church. Um, and if that's true, if these, I haven't seen any actual studies, um, but we're not done with the topic yet, but if that's true, uh, it's a sad thing for the church. Um, and this, but think about it, this is why politics is such a divisive topic in the church. Um, why do pastors have to be so careful when speaking about politics? Because we have people in our church of both persuasions, right? And you'll, you'll offend one of them. Well, um, I'm not arguing for one political party or saying one party is right or wrong, but shouldn't we all more closely be guided by the Word and the Spirit of God than by a political party? Uh, the problem is that politics is more important to people than Jesus is. 
Um, and media has a greater influence on the lives of those who say they love Jesus than the words of Jesus do. Uh, so really my question is, um, why is this? And this may not apply to you. This may be completely not in your ballpark today. You say, I love the Lord, I love His Word, I love His Spirit, and that's what guides me, and I'm not much for politics. There probably certainly are those people out there. Um, but the question I want to deal with today is, why is this happening? Um, this is a new phenomenon. Social media didn't exist 20 years ago. There was no such thing. Uh, CNN, the, 24, the first 24-hour... Uh, seven day a week news service started in 1980 and really probably didn't become a real private thing and now it has all its competitors um, that are constantly vying for our attention um, but here's one of the reasons why this may be happening uh, not only is social media a new phenomenon but um, an, an article I read said a church's worship habits may occupy two hours of a Christian's week but podcasts, radio shows, cable news, social media, streaming entertainment, and other forms of media account for upwards of 90 hours of their week. Um, so I think if that is true, um, that gives us a cause and a reason to reflect, to pause and realize that if we're spending two hours in worship in a week and 90 hours on other forms of, of media, what do we think is going to influence us more? Uh, your spiritual life, the growth, the sum total of your discipleship cannot be summarized or described in 100 and, what is it, 140 characters on Twitter. Um, it should not be spawned by a media or a video clip um, from something that we've seen anywhere. Uh, it seems like the shorter the video clip, the more, po uh, the more popular the app on the phone. Um, Christianity is a, uh, a long... Um, I guess I would describe it this way. There's a book written by um, Eugene Peterson. It's called Long Obedience in the Same Direction. To me, that is uh, one of the greatest ways to describe the Christian faith. And it is, such a, it is so at odds with what social media tells us that we can give you an inspiring quote in 140 words or an 8 to 10 second video um, that's going to help you survive through the day. Uh, and those can be nice. They can be Christian-oriented and encouraging and aiding to your spiritual growth, but there's still something much more powerful about a long obedience in the same direction. So that's my argument today, is don't let social media, uh, be a or any kind of media, be a larger influence on your attitudes uh, towards things than the Word of God. Uh, let me encourage you to go back as I think about this topic this morning. Uh, last night, which would have been Wednesday, uh, August 26th, was it, yesterday? Yeah. Uh, I did a half hour, um, kind of just like a prayer time. Um, let me encourage you, if you did not do that, if you weren't with us last night or haven't watched that yet, go back and watch that. Spend that half hour in prayer today. Uh, whether you're praying about the topics that I covered or you're praying about other things, it just uh, tunes your heart to the things of God, as reminded of the hymn, uh, come thou fount of every blessing. Uh, it says this one of the lyrics says, "Tune my heart to sing thy grace." Um, so cut out some of the ninety hours of extra media you put in this week and put a put an extra half hour in tuning your heart to sing God's grace. So I wanted to give you some scripture as I thought this this topic through. Uh, I've, I've shared my concern with you um, that people are more um, their attitudes, their lives are more shaped by media than by the Word of God and their and their local church. Uh, but 1 Corinthians 10, 23 says this, and this is the verse that I really want you to dig into this morning um, because it's not going to make a whole lot of sense as I read it here. Paul writes, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything builds up. So what I want you to do is dig into the background of that, um, so the, what is it specifically this Paul, that Paul is speaking about? What is the message to us? Uh, I'll probably unpack this a little bit for us. I think we may come back to this next week. Um, also, you can First Corinthians chapter six, uh, specifically verse twelve, is part of that same idea. Uh, I think he's talking about some, a different subject then. Um, but basically, the the idea, just a brief summary for you this morning, is that just because things are permissible, doesn't mean we should indulge in them. Um, and this not only applies to media, it applies to food. Think of all the things that uh, Scripture doesn't says these are permissible, but it's not necessarily good for you. Uh, many things are legal, but it's not necessarily helpful or wise. And 
uh, you would throw the accusation at me. Uh, you're probably just saying that we should listen to you, Pastor, because you are a pastor. Yes, I am a pastor. And yes, that's probably why I'm saying that. Um, as I look at, um, as I have been reading through the Old Testament prophets, I looked at some of the, uh, God would give them this mission, this message uh, to speak to his people. Uh, and people didn't listen. Uh, and it, it's sounding more and more like the days that we pastors minister in today. And I know if you watched me last night, you're thinking, oh, it's the sob story for pastors. No, but I'm just, I'm trying to share a burden of my heart with you. Um, and this is this has been in there for a while, and I wanted to bring it to you this morning. Uh, I read an article a week or so ago that said media habits should be a discipleship focus, which I had never considered before. We always often think about becoming a disciple, reading the Word of God, prayer, um, fellowship, communion, evangelism, all those sorts of things. Um, but the article was challenging us as pastors to include media habits as part of your discipleship. So I would, I want to do that today. I want to read you the rest of the quote. Uh, it said, pastors help Christians see the formational power of what they consume online. Show them how toxic a media diet can be when it's heavy on partisan sources, cable news, and Twitter. Uh, teach media literacy. Um, that's one thing that I've been diving into myself. Um, where can I get information that I can trust? Where can I get the whole story that's not just trying to sell me something? Uh, the article continues, suggest digital fasts, uh, and I absolutely i have done that before. Uh, encourage them toward more reliable sources of wisdom, and then he recommends a book uh, that hopefully I'll get, through, I'll get to this year. Uh, point them to trustworthy online resources, uh, and if I knew what those were at this point, uh, hope, at some point I hope to give those to you, but if I knew what they were today, I'd tell you. Uh, help them see the emptiness of newsfeed style remixed spirituality. Uh, treat media gluttony and excessive internet time as serious pastoral issues on par with other addictions. Uh, lovingly speak into the online habits forming your church members. Uh, like I said, maybe this isn't you today, um, but m maybe uh, it, it is a challenge to you. It sounds like somebody's on the roof of my building. I don't know if you can hear that today, but anyway. Um, but when the the path is dark and unclear or uncertain uh, in the days that we live in, we need a, a, a lamp to show us the way. Uh, we need a light. Psalm 119.105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And you may remember that as a popular song from the 80s. Um, but listen to... Uh, and Psalm 119 has many verses talking about the virtues of the Word of God. But I want to go back to Psalm 19 and read just a few verses there. And I want you to listen to the type of life that is described when the Scripture is our guide. This is Psalm 19, verses 7 through 9. It says, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. Wouldn't that be a great thing to have happen to you today that your soul is revived? The verse continues, The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Uh, and that's, a lot of us would, be, would request that in this day and age, to make us wise. Verse 8, The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. Maybe you need joy in your heart today. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. And you just see this, this brightness coming into someone's face when... Um, when we're guided by the principles and the Word of God, and we have an absolute source of truth and, and trust. Verse 9 says, The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. Um, so I would add one last verse to Psalm 19 there, Proverbs 6.23, uh, speaking specifically about a parent's instruction. It says, For these commands are a lamp, this teaching is a light, and the corrections of discipline are the way to life. Um, another, another version paraphrases that. For sound advice is a beacon. Good teaching is a light. Moral discipline is a life path. Um, and that just reminds me of what I spoke of a little bit earlier about a long obedience in the same direction. Uh, and as I said, it's quite possible we're going to come back to this topic next week in a little different way. Um, but I want to encourage you to explore that verse in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, chapter 6 today uh, and find out uh, what was Paul, or excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23, uh, and also 1 Corinthians 6, 12, and, and look at what Paul was talking about and dig into those passages today 
uh, as part of your media fast and your uh, attempt to indulge in the things of God. So let me pray for us this morning. Father, I thank you for an opportunity to speak from the heart this morning to your people. Pray that we have been challenged. Uh, I know I have, including myself, thinking this through. Uh, God, help us to be not just discerning um, with the uh, quality of what we are absorbing through media, uh, but with the quantity of it as well, to realize um, the amount of weight that we give to things has an influence on our lives. Help us to give more time and more weight to the things of God uh, so that we become more in tune with your heart and with your word and your spirit. Uh, I pray that for uh, those who are watching today. and pray that you'd be a, uh, a light for us in a dark place. May we be people whose um, whose joy just shines out of our eyes to and and just brings you glory uh, as we proclaim to be followers of you. Uh, and we ask this in Christ's name, Amen. Well, hey, thanks for being here today. Um, God bless. Uh, again, live stream ten thirty on Sunday, uh, and other than that, we'll see you next Tuesday at nine. Have a great day.